You are listening to Lovely Talks Heavy. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Lovely Talks Heavy. I am your host, Lovely, and I discuss everything I enjoy with regard to heavy music. First off, thank you for bearing with me last week with my depression episode. It might definitely not be the last time that this sort of thing happens. However, with NaNoWriMo approaching, I'll be doing the backlog approach of with my episodes. And if it really works well, I'll go with that from now on. Another fun update is that I have my Halloween costume together. I cannot wait for Halloween to come. I'm so excited. Like, okay, I will say, I'll say one thing. I will say one thing. This costume involves a Power Wolf shirt. That's all I'm going to say for now. I was super excited when I got it in, though. And it's my first actual um piece of Power Wolf merch that I have that isn't, uh, you know, music in my iTunes library. But anyway, moving on. On to business. Let's talk about the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. So, the idea of, you know, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame being anything, you know, t- like, terrible, it being called the Hall of Shame and Disgrace or what have you, was introduced to me by none other than Eddie Trunk when I was watching that metal show as a youngin. Oh, may that show rest in peace. Oh my goodness. Anyways, so... That idea was first introduced to me by Eddie Trunk, and the idea that so many great bands haven't been inducted yet is just awful. You know, bands like Judas Priest or Iron Maiden, or at this time Metallica, it was just, you know, infuriating. It was frustrating. If you've ever, um, infuriating and frustrating to, uh, Eddie Trunk, you know, he's gotten really heated about this i've seen a lot of this a lot of uh uh, that metal show practically every single episode it basically molded it was part of the molding of me into the metal head that i am today but anyway so i forgot where i was going where was i going with this back on it okay so it's just like you know it would just be a really hot topic for eddie trunk at points where, if you've ever watched that metal show, there would always be a segment at the end of the show called The Throwdown, where they would always debate something like which is the better album between these two bands, or which band is better, or who's a better guitarist. And one of the topics I remember once upon a time was, uh, was, uh, which is a worse institution, the Rock and Roll Hall of Shame or the Shammies, the Grammys, you know? And it came down to, I think it came down to the Rock and Roll Hall of Shame because the Shammies, I don't know why I'm actually using these words, um, were actually clueless. They really don't know what they're doing. They don't know what de- metal is actually, even though they've gotten better in recent years or whatever. But anyway, so this all brings it down to the topic of what I'm going to be talking about, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And I'm not going to use Rock and Roll Hall of Shame because, you know... It's whatever. But anyway, so, in recent weeks, the nominees for the upcoming class for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame were announced, and pretty notable among the bunch were Judas Priest and Rage Against the Machine. Notable, in my opinion, anyways. So, now every time the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame comes out with contenders... For the upcoming class, there's always some conversation, a lot of times heated conversation, about their picks. For those unawares of the process of picking the contenders for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, it goes a bit like this. Number one, to even be considered to have your... No, flip that. To even have your band be considered, 25 years have to have passed since the release of your first album. Two... A select group of people in the music industry, artists, producers, all that jazz, 
uh, vote on their picks for the coming induction, and from that group's votes, the most popular are noted, and then those are contenders for the coming year. Some notable inductions in the past years have included Metallica and Kiss, who no doubt have impacted the music industry. Kiss for popularizing the use of costumed personas in the on stage, Metallica for their influence on the sounds of so many bands to come in the future years since 1980s, what have you. Um, these are just a few reasons for their induction. These aren't the sole reasons, but just a few for the inclusion of Metallica and Kiss into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Aside from criticism from people like Eddie Trunk and anyway, so moving on. So, however, despite these inductions of notable musical acts, complaint is still held among music fans due to induction of quote, non-rock acts, unquote, in lack of, say, Iron Maiden. Now, this episode won't be telling people they shouldn't complain about this, because if you didn't have passion for music, then you wouldn't be complaining at all. However, there should be a way to go about it, I think, having an informed opinion on it, and that's what I try to do instead of complaining about Shaka Khan on VH1 Classic. <laughs> um, I will be, I won't be talking too much about the inclusion of non-rock acts or supposedly non-rock acts in this episode. I'm going to focus more so on the induction process, the Hall of Fame's process of picking their bands, that sort of thing. I think I will talk about a few, talk about the uh, lack of rock acts in a future episode, but for now, let's get into it. I do want to bring a different, a differently angled approach to viewing the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. So, my complaint lies not on the lack of acts like Iron Maiden being within the Hall of Fame. Instead, it is the approach into how they archive it, which I kind of hinted at earlier. The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame describes their purpose on their website as being dedicated to the archival of music history. I may be paraphrasing that a bit. It seems to me that if you were dedicated to archival, you wouldn't be approaching it in a matter similar to an award show. Archiving music history seems pointless if it's on a yearly and voted upon basis. I feel that there would be a significantly less amount of stigma around the Hall of Fame if they did a few things, and by few I mean five, and here they are. Number one, give yourself a different name. <laughs> The usage of the phrase Hall of Fame denotes a certain exclusivity and therefore a debate about who, quote, deserves to be invited into this club. Something like the International Music Archives would work much better for the purpose that the Hall of Fame states that they follow. Number two, archive on a more frequent basis than once a year. It does take a lot to go through a band's at least 25-year history and note their impact on the music industry understandably. However, more than a handful of bands at a time can be archived. Instead of going to experts of the music industry to vote on who should be inducted next, you should use their expertise and research capabilities to note the impact and significance of musical acts places in music. Use this as an opportunity to create more literature about music and music history, which brings me on to another excellent idea that I didn't even think of until just now. Number three, have a library section in the Hall of Fame and send out books to public libraries. Of course, yes, there is a museum part of it already, but Having a place where people can learn more and more about the history of music would be fantastic. Having that information and knowledge available for people not in Ohio, where the Hall of Fame is, would be 
so phenomenal, so useful for people who want to learn more, who want to really engage themselves with hard rock and heavy metal history, and for people who want to further create more literature or places in media or just in academia for music. Number four. Stop treating the archival of music like an award show. I personally hate award shows because they tread a thin line of celebrating music and being insular garbage. And often they're just insular garbage who aren't even consistent about their guidelines of choice. Note when Macklemore won, I think it was a Grammy for Best Song, uh, for selling a lot of albums, basically. And, you know, a lot of people were kind of upset because he's a white guy who is rapping, you know. And I don't, you know, fault people for that complaint. And the reasoning behind that choice was, oh, he sold a lot of albums, you know. That's why he got the award, you know. But then in following years, Beyonce, who, like, broke fucking records of selling of album sales within one day of of releasing an album with zero zero mind you uh ad marketing for it and while just keeping all of this production of a new album 100% secret she did all of that and didn't even win album of the year hashtag who is Beck? So, explain that to me. Part of this is just be more transparent about your guidelines if you're going to do this. Or just admit you don't want to give black people awards. But anyway, that's a whole different thing. <gasps> Anyways! Tying back to the point of more frequently archiving musical history, I suggest this. Have a list of bands or musical acts or influencers in the music industry from which experts can pick and then dedicate themselves to archiving those people. And then every year, new bands will be added on once they pass their 25-year mark if they've made any sort of notable impact on the music industry. Once you have a whole volume or more of books ready for publishing on these bands' impact on the music history, then at a certain point each year, you can celebrate all of the bands that you've managed to archive and the people who put in so much research and effort into the archival. This, this way, you're celebrating hard work in multiple facets and not just creating an award show. And number five... Allow public involvement to some degree. Of course, we value the expertise of people like producers, writers, mixers, and artists in the music industry, but public fan involvement is important too. Fans are the ones supporting bands monetarily, passionately, creatively. Without a dedicated fan base, hard rock, heavy metal, and music as a whole would not have had the opportunity to grow and evolve to the point that it has today. Perhaps in the archiving process, we allow something like fan contributions, proofreading available to fans, some kind of special gift made available to fans that are members of a fan club of a band that is being archived in that year. Those are just some steps. These are just some steps that the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame can take for someone like me to take it as an archiving institution more seriously. However, if we're talking about the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in its present state, I simply think we just don't need it. Some Hall of Fame or award ceremony, including Judas Priest and its archives on iconicness, doesn't and shouldn't dictate the impact that certain musical acts have made on the world. Sure, yes, it's nice to be recognized by a mainstream institution for all of your hard work, but it is the fans of music that determine the impact of that music. 
It's the fans that say, Hey, Metallica? Hey, hey, Metallica? Death Magnetic sucked, and the album cover looked like a hairy vagina. But that's okay, we still love you. It's the fans that continue to purchase the music and saying, Please keep making more of this. It's the fans that are buying tickets to these shows, not caring if they're 70 million meters away from Iron Maiden, so long as they can hear Bruce Dickinson's voice in the real flesh space, even just a little bit. Fan clubs, zines, fan art, song covers, the inspiration to pick up and learn an instrument or a new language. It's all of this and more that determines the impact that a musical act makes. Even though they are in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame now, Metallica and Kiss didn't need to be inducted to show their impact on the music history. All you'd have to do to understand that impact is to ask any Metallica and or Kiss fan. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Lovely Talks Heavy. If you enjoyed it, please share it. Every time this podcast hits a new set of years, it means the absolute world to me. If you have any feedback on my podcast or want to give your thoughts on the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, please let me know on Twitter, Instagram, Tumblr, YouTube, and Mixcloud. I am simply Lovely Metalhead. And just a note, folks... This is the last Saturday of October, which means November is coming soon. And November is NaNoWriMo, or National November Month of Writing. I will be posting a backlog of episodes in the coming Saturday so that I can focus solely on my goal of writing a novel in the span of a month. (laughs) And there'll hardly be a waking moment, I assure you, that I won't be listening to classical music, so I might be coming out of November a little bit different than when I came in. Um, so I'll still be here. I'll just be backlogged. Um, and finally, this coming Monday is my friend Moped's birthday. She is Moped Rooney on Instagram if you want to leave her a little love on my behalf. I consider her to be, like, my precious metal daughter. And, yeah, she's, you know, she's just an amazing person. So, happy Scorpio season, happy birthday to Moped, and until next week, next Saturday, the first of four Saturdays in November, you stay brutal. Bye.